Okay. Okay. Good morning, everyone. To uh, welcome to the course BC three zero nine on urban church planting. We're going to take a moment, and then we will moment to pray, and then we'll get started. Um, could somebody please pray with us, and then we will uh, get started in our class. Anybody could pray. Please go ahead. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day and beautiful time, Father God, in your presence and going through all these classes, Lord. As we are going through this particular class for Urban Church, God, we ask you, Lord, just as we are learning, as we are pursuing through your word, God, help us to understand, Father God. Help us to be with you, Lord Jesus, Father God, so that we can get the things which you want us to get, Lord. Father God, we Submit, Pastor Asis, and all the students to your mighty hand, Father God. Be in your, be so that we will be in your presence, God, and do what you do, Father God. Thank you. We submit whole thing to your mighty hand, and we access pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we are. Um, we've been talking about the various stages of um, growth and development uh, in, our, in our course here on church planting, urban church planting. Let me just share the PDF. Okay. So we're still in lesson number 14, uh, gro growth and consolidation. Uh, we were just explaining you know, different things that we have to look for as we um, start pioneering a work and then we're, going, we're talking about different stages, you know, what happens as that work grows and how uh, we uh, as leaders and along with the, the team, how we need to continue to grow the work or nurture the work. Yesterday, we are focusing mainly on stage two, which has to do with the organizational, administrative, or structural stage. And these are just you know terms we've given to um, to show what would be the main thing that we need to focus on as we transition. And uh, some of the things that we were talking about uh, yesterday was how God leads us to birth new ministry. You know, as um, as um, as uh, you're pioneering the work and uh, you're getting started, of course, there would be things that God has put in your heart as a leader and maybe in the team and the initial team. But then God can also, you know, God will surely also send people uh, with different gifts and callings. And uh, uh, you recognize them, you, you know, maybe um, you, um, you, you create opportunities for them, you let them you know, take charge of various ministries. So that's how the ministries will happen uh, uh, in the local church that you're pioneering. Uh, you yourself, or maybe the few leaders with you, uh, will not be able to do everything. So you have to you know, recognize the people God is sending and uh, welcome them and uh, give them uh, the opportunities to do it. The last thing I just wanted to mention or emphasize here as we are moving into the structural stage, of your, 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 the organizational part, things are coming in place, is um, always think about creating a reproducible model. That means, you know, whatever you're doing in this church that you are pioneering or the ministry that you are starting, um, create it in such a way that it can be easily reproduced or replicated uh, if the Lord leads you to plant more churches and uh, or you know start branches of that ministry, and typically when we see you know when we look at a city, uh, we said you know the cities of cities are so big that uh, just one church plant is not going to you know serve that many people. But, uh, you would need many church plants in the city. Or same thing with the ministry. 
and then not only in that city itself but you could also you also have the opportunity of uh, replicating other cities in that country uh, other urban centers so uh, with that in mind trying to create a reproducible model that means what you're doing here as you're pioneering the church should be easily replicated in other places and uh, uh, and if you know so for example the way we have been able to do it here in bangalore is uh, you know of course in the initial initially we started one location but then it was very easy for you know, we then planted you know uh, one in the south and then later one in uh, in uh, mangalore which was another city is not too far from bangalore and then, then uh, we also did one in the north, and the north part of our city, Bangalore. And uh, later on, when we wanted to start one in the east part of our city and one in the west part of our city, it's very easy. Uh, we just, from the core team, that is from the people who were in the central church, we said, okay, this team, you go and start in the east, and here are some of you, you go and start in the west. And they just knew what to do, you know, because, uh, they just replicated the model, replic replicated what we were already doing. They just went, the, the, the team that went there, they just went and just did exactly the same. This is how we would do everything. So it was so easy. And uh, today we kind of maintain some sort of a, um, a, a, a model, a certain way of doing things uh, across all of these six locations, five in Bangalore and one in Mangalore. We follow the same thing. Now, of course, uh, these are all English, congregations, English speaking congregations. So we are able to do that. Uh, but uh, the point I want to emphasize is uh, whatever you're doing in, in, in your first church plant or in the initial, uh, in, in, the, in the ministry that you're starting, do it in such a way that it can be replicated, reproduced. That if, if there are, there's a team of people going from here, they just are very clear in their mind how we are supposed to do this. You know, and it can be reproduced. Uh, now, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying it shouldn't be adapted uh, in a, to a new place. Of course, you know, you can always adapt, but at least you have a good starting point. Um, you've got some good lessons that you've learned uh, from the initial work, which can be used reproducibly uh, in other locations that are similar, like for similar congregations, the church plants. So think about that, and if you can, you know, uh, make it very clear in the minds of people, then it can be easy to reproduce. And we will talk a little bit later about a uh, new church plan. So now we move to the third stage. So as you have started raising up, giving some structure to what is happening, the next stage is to build leaders, right? So you are now thinking about team. So starting from the pastoral level. So, so initially, you know, uh, pioneering, yeah, you were there and if you, there was a core team of people with different skill sets who were supporting and everything. You're pioneering. Now you, you went into the organizational stage, you're, you know, you, you're creating, causing uh, your, you're seeing new ministries come, uh, the work is beginning to expand, very good. But you need to reproduce leadership at all levels. Right? Starting from the pastoral team and the various teams that are there, uh, you need to raise up more and more leaders. Now, uh, depending on where you are doing this pioneering work, uh, you know, the dynamics of what is happening can be different. For us in Bangalore, uh, in, in, in the city of Bangalore, for us, what we have noticed is our church or the people in our congregation are very mobile. It means um, they don't usually stay in Bangalore for, you know, uh, for a long period of time. Uh, you know, a lot of, let's say, you know, they would come in here as maybe as college students. Uh, they would get a job, they would start working, uh, they would get married, and then shortly after that, they would relocate. They would, most of them would travel overseas. So uh, uh, our, our congregation has been 
you know, um, uh, we've, we've seen that through and through. So numerous people have come in, they've been developed as leaders, and then they, they go somewhere else. They go to some other part of the world, which is a good thing. I mean, it's a good thing for them, for their lives in the future, and uh, they are able to serve in other parts of the world, which is wonderful. But that also means we've got to constantly keep developing leaders at all levels, you know. Uh, for example, even those who were part of our pastoral team, you know, uh, have moved to other parts of the world. So we'll have to, you know, raise up our new people as part of the pastoral team. Uh, we've um, then leaders in, you know, in different uh, ministry areas. Uh, for example, there were people who were leading, you know, marketplace ministry. You know, one moved to Australia, one moved to Paris, and now we have somebody else leading it. And then, uh, you know, we don't know what will happen. And maybe, we, you know, they may move or whatever. So different ministry areas, leaders are developed. They move. Uh, so you'll constantly keep developing leaders. Now, if all the leaders stayed at APC, you know, we would, you know, we would have huge, huge numbers of people, and uh, uh, you know, lots of things happening. But the dynamic is different here. Uh, we have a constantly uh, upwardly mobile, professionally uh, moving people, so which is good. They're, they get trained, they get equipped, they have experience, they have a wonderful experience, and then they they move to different parts of the world. But in this stage, your goal is to raise up leaders and um, at all levels. So at the pastoral team level, you have to look for people that you want to be part of your pastoral team so that you can have more than yourself, more than one person, uh, you know, ministering and teaching and do, doing that pastoral type ministry. Then you need leaders in various ministry areas. You need leaders even in all of the volunteer teams and so on. And you need to create this opportunity, constantly developing leaders. Now, this is not easy, right? Because you do, uh, definitely you need to have leaders you can trust, right? You need leaders, you know, who when you uh, entrust something, you know that they will do it well. They will be good stewards. They will be faithful to the church and the congregation and the people. And so uh, it's not always easy. And then, of course, um, you need, you know, uh, you need to uh, be able to provide feedback to the leaders. Uh, you need to be able to, you know, uh, correct them, nurture them, uh, so on and so forth. So um, it's not an easy thing, but it is very important. So your role as a pastor becomes more of nurturing as many leaders as possible and letting them do the work of the ministry in caring for the congregation and so on. Of course, you will have certain amounts of work to do to care for the congregation, the people, but more of it is being done through the leaders you're developing. And your focus is on developing the teams, the leaders, and so you're moving more into, you know, what you know, people would refer to as a senior pastor role or that kind of a role where your goal is to nurture more leaders. Okay. Now, uh, I, I'm not spending a lot of time here talking about nurturing leaders. You, you, you know, you have a course on Christian leadership. Uh, I think this semester or next semester, I forget, where you will focus on, you know, the whole aspect of Christian leadership. But uh, let me say that, you know, as this church that you have started, you're pioneering, is developing, you also need to shift. You also need to change uh, in your emphasis, what you're doing. Your goal will be, I need to raise up more leaders. And uh, uh, like I said I, I, in, in, in an earlier class, I think, you know, look at leaders at different age levels. So what helps for me is I think of you know, a set of leaders who are in their 40s, another set of leaders who are in their 30s, uh, another grouping of leaders who are in their 20s. So you're intentionally developing leaders, uh, you know, at various age levels so that, you know, uh, uh, they will mature, they will rise up into 
higher levels of leadership in what's happening um, and uh, always have a pool of leaders that you are developing. Okay. So uh, before I just jump into the next stage, um, number three, uh, any questions on that? Any thoughts, any questions there? Any questions? All right, let's move forward. So from that stage, as a leader and as a team that's overseeing this work, you transition into an equipping stage. Now, of course, when you move into a new stage, remember, you don't, you don't stop doing the things you were doing before. Right? That means, you know, whatever the good thing, the foundation you laid in the pioneering, those kinds of things will continue. What you did in the structure, the organizational stage, those ministries, the ministries that you started, they will continue. Then the leaders you've developed, of course, they will continue. But now you, number stage number four is where the whole congregation is being mobilized into ministry. Now that means it's not just about the church planting team. It's no longer about the senior pastor. It's no longer just about the leaders, but now it is about the entire church being mobilized, being equipped, being encouraged. Right? So you're now changing. It's changing now. So the goal, of course, this is what God wants, right? He wants, God wants the whole church to come into that place of maturity where all the saints are equipped uh, to do the work of the ministry, to build up the body of Christ. And so you begin to think of in those lines. It's not about uh, just the leadership doing in ministry. How can we get more people involved? How can we get more people mobilized uh, for ministry, men and women? How can they serve within the church? How can they serve outside the church? How can they go on missions? Um, you know, and, and just do the things that God has called uh, to do. Right? So the goal is to get everyone involved, everybody in the church. Right? So you need to, you know, begin to and equip the people that way. Uh, and then you need to uh, create opportunities that way. And, uh, and, and believers begin to minister. Believers are encouraged to minister. How would we do that? You know, some of the things that we have, are doing, so because we, we've not, you know, we don't stop this stage, we, we're still engaged in this, is, we, you know, for instance, we do weekend schools. So uh, every month, one Saturday, we, we do weekend schools. Um, and we repeat these topics, you know, on ministering, healing, and deliverance, on lifestyle evangelism, on understanding the prophetic, on the gifts of the spirit. We keep on repeating it throughout the, throughout the year. So, uh, and we just keep it open. So some people will come and attend. Uh, they, sometimes they will attend two or three times. But what we, are, what we are telling is, look, we want to equip every believer in, in all of these things. We encourage you to come. So uh, uh, believers come and they are equipped. Uh, we create opportunities for people to serve uh, in the church. Uh, we create opportunities for people to go out on mission. So they go out on missions. We just restarted, resumed our uh, missions work just last week. Uh, there was a team of three people. They traveled to one of our outreach ch churches. They were ministering there, uh, young people. And they came back. And then you know, uh, other mission trips are planned for this year. And then the, more will happen next year. So we just restarted the mission, but we are moving church people. I mean, you go on mission trips, whoever wants to go, and the people are beginning to you know, step in and begin to go out. So the goal now is the whole church is being equipped to engage in ministry. Ultimately, believers will be ministering to one another and to the world outside, right? So if, uh, uh, there's missions happening. The whole church catches the visions for a vision for missions, and everybody's excited, you know, uh, of being involved in missions. They are willing to go out and share. So that's the equipping stage. 
knowledge, right? So getting everybody involved in uh, what's going. So this will come over time, right? It's not going to happen the first year or the second year, uh, you know, and uh, there is no set timeline for all of these things to happen. Uh, as a person who's planting the church, leading the church, you know, and you and the core team, you need to be sensitive to, you know, the transition the church is making. Where is the church? And how do we move them into the next stage? And lastly, uh, uh, you know, hopefully, you know, we, every work we start can reach the stage. Uh, we, you know, we're just calling it an apostolic uh, stage. That means now you're going to expand and, and step into new territory for the kingdom of God. That means uh, uh, you're going beyond. So the initial church plant may have been for one particular region. But now you're saying, okay, let's go beyond our own region. Let's go to other cities. Let's go to uh, uh, other cities in the nation. Let's go across and beyond our own nation. It's um, uh, it's uh, reproducing uh, the work uh, in the region and beyond. Right? So that's an apostolic mindset. So now we create that in the mind of believers. So believers are also thinking and they're also ready to go to new places. You know, they're not saying, okay, I just want to stay here. This is a nice place. No, they're thinking in terms of, hey, how can I take what is happening here? Uh, take it to a new place where this is not happening. Uh, take it to a new place where a church is needed. Take it to a new place where, you know, uh, God's people need to receive the word. So the whole church is thinking like this. They're thinking they have an apostolic mindset. They are... Thinking in terms of gaining new ground, taking new territory for the kingdom of God, uh, by what through what God is already doing in this place. Right? So that is a, a great place to be. If you if the work you've started reaches stage five and is really strong here, you know that is a good thing. That's a good journey to make and then from there you know it's constantly growing and, and and a work that is constantly growing and reproducing itself will always keep thriving it will never die out why because it's grow it's it's reproducing itself it's constantly growing there's always uh, that that um, that life that is happening in that church right so uh, ultimately think about becoming self sustaining financially stable and also in terms of leadership and people that are being developed, uh, if that is happening on an ongoing basis, uh, that is amazing. Any thoughts, any questions so far? Okay. All right, I see Christopher's question. So, uh, please explain Second Timothy chapter three, verses sixteen and seventeen. So, um, any particular part of this verse that you want to explain, Christopher? Uh, um, the um, or for reproof and for correction. Yeah. So the word reproof simply means evidence to give evidence or conviction you could use another word for the proof as conviction and correction I mean correction is if somebody is going off track going off the path you bring them onto the path so the word of god serves for doctrine establishing people in the right teaching doctrine for the proof which is to give them conviction uh, uh, in their hearts about what is right and wrong what is you know of the spiritual truth, conviction, and for correction, let's get them back on track. So uh, that is part of what we need to do constantly. So through every stage of what we're doing, we're ministering the word. And as the word is being ministered, it will serve different purposes in the lives of people. It will establish them in God's truth, doctrine. It will establish them with the conviction uh, of the truth. Uh, it may correct people. It will also teach them how to live right inside. And then people are equipped to serve God, to do every good work. Yeah? So the ministry of God's word is very important. 
Anything else? Any other questions so far? Okay. Class is very quiet today. Um, let's go forward. Fine. So, so we talked about different stages of growth and development. I think the point I, I would want to emphasize is that as a church planter or as a person pioneering or leading the pioneering work, you need to understand or discern where the congregation is and keep moving them into, you know, into the next level. Uh, keep taking them up. Um, the, the, the tendency is for people to stay comfortable where they are, especially, you know, if you've reached stage two or stage three, uh, everybody, okay, yeah, everything looks good, things are happening, let's be very comfortable. Uh, to uh, stage four and five are the uncomfortable stages because now you're challenging believers, saying, believers, you can't come and just sit in the seats. You have to be equipped to do the ministry. Oh, that's very disturbing because everybody likes comfort. We can come and sit here nicely and listen, enjoy the worship and teaching. But the moment you say, hey, we, we got to equip you to do the ministry, that's a little un uncomfortable. And then apostolic is, guys, we need you to leave. We need you to go out. We need you to think of taking new ground, uh, you know, impacting new things. That's, again, very uncomfortable. So really, stages four and five are uncomfortable. So as a leader, you know, you need to gently move the church from stage to stage and uh, intentionally direct the work and the effort to the ministry uh, to growing the church into an apostolic church. Number 15, lesson number 15. So now, uh, this is kind of a continuation of the last point of uh, the apostolic stage where you can think of multiplication and branching. And hopefully every work you pioneer, whether it's a local church or a ministry, will multiply, will branch out, uh, whether in the city or across into other cities and towns. Uh, but then for that to happen, what, mu what must you do? You've got to equip people. Remember, it's going to be through people. Without people, you cannot have additional congregations. So equip people. Envision them, you know, let them know that they can do the ministry, they can preach, they can teach, they can do it. Uh, send out church planting teams, you know, empower people, let them go out, let them do it, and uh, uh, send them out. Now, for new church plants, there are many ways you can do this. You can uh, set up or you can uh, you know, encourage people to plant churches that function completely independent. That means they're on their own. You just support them, help them get started and function independently. Or you can have a model that where uh, you function as one church with many congregations. That's the mod. That's kind of what we are doing in Bangalore. Uh, it's one church uh, with many congregations. And, you know, if, as the Lord leads, we could plant more congregations. Or you can use the satellite campus model where, you know, it's... Uh, one pastor who's preaching through uh, connectivity, through connection, live streaming across many campuses in the city. Uh, that also is possible. And, uh, but you know, we chose not to do this here, uh, the third one, uh, because we felt uh, doing the second approach would give opportunity for more people to participate, more leaders to be raised, and so on and so forth. So we intentionally chose uh, a model where Every church, every every church has its own associate pastor and teams and people who are leading, so we can have many more leaders raised up. Um, the satellite campuses that hear just one person preach in all the campuses, uh, the emphasis is too much on that one pastor. I'm not saying it's wrong. Um, uh, we just chose not to follow that model. So there are many options in which you can have multiple churches in the church plants in the same city. You find out what works well for you, how the Lord leads you, and then you can plant additional congregations in the same city. Uh, then you can also think of planting churches in other cities and towns. Um, again, for this to happen, you have to equip people. And for us, uh, the Bible College has become a major way by which we plant churches in other cities and towns. 
uh, every church that uh, that we have started across India, outside of Bangalore, uh, is pastored by uh, somebody who studied with us here, or who was trained with us here. You know, uh, so uh, that's how we plant churches. We we choose not to adopt churches, uh, but we choose to equip people, and then they go out and they plant churches. Um, so again, we do the same thing. We equip the people. Uh, we do this through our Bible college. We envision them, then we send them out, and then we, uh, of course, we, 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 we give them the option. You know, you can work as, you can set up uh, as an outreach church. You can be a part of APC. So it'll be APC called by that name of that city, whatever. Or if you want to go and start your own church, or in the, work independently, that's fine. You know, we, we kind of help them do that as well, we release them to do it. However they want. So um, uh, all our outreach churches are churches that carry the name APC, you know, APC by the name of the city. Uh, that helps us, of course, uh, when people ask us, you know, do you have a church here? Then we just point them to uh, that particular church in that city. So we can plant churches in other cities. And then, of course, there is a system for oversight and nurture. So every month, all our outreach pastors, they connect online. Uh, that usually happens on the third Saturday of the month. So we all connect online. Uh, and of course, Pastor Nancy uh, oversees them. Uh, so you know, they have a time for fellowship. And then, and then uh, once a year, we bring them all to Bangalore. They come and then we spend time together, again, in, in conference, in the Word of God, in prayer, and so on. Then from here, we send people into all these churches to minister. So there's a lot of uh, spiritual oversight and nurture that we give to all of these churches that have been planted in other cities and towns. So they are strengthened, they're empowered. Of course, they're all financially supported uh, from our church here in Bangalore. So we help them uh, financially and, and they, they grow. Uh, so you can think of what m model works for you. But the, the point is, uh, when you have pioneered a church, uh, the goal is to grow it and then see how it can be reproduced in your own city and also in other cities or towns uh, across the country. Okay. Any questions so far? Everybody with me so, so far? Any questions? Best, best. Okay. So now we we have journeyed through the natural aspects so far. That means uh, starting from you know we talked about doing a survey of the place. To how do you go about getting in there? What are the things you look at in getting your work start? started how do you you know do the initial launch to how do you reach out to people what are the strategies you can have for evangelism in that area how do you especially if you're in an urban setting how do you equip people to uh, impact or influence the seven spheres seven mountains and then also how do you take that work which you started uh, into further stages of growth and development? And then how do you branch out and plant more churches? So we, we went from doing a survey all the way to planting branch churches. All of this uh, we talked about from a practical side, right? a practical way of doing things. And there are various things that go into uh, doing it. Now we are going to transition. We're going to move into a totally different section, which is the spiritual side. Right? Uh, what are the things you have to look at spiritually? How do you, you know, while you're doing all these practical things, which we said, you know, you're doing your survey, you're, you're finding the place, et cetera, et cetera. That's the pra practical side. But then there is a spiritual side to the church planting, uh, to growing the church, to nurturing it and going forward. So we will get into the, uh, the spiritual aspects next week. And then after we cover that, 
we go into the third section, which is the personal life of the person who's going to pioneer. Uh, I kept that uh, purposely towards the end because uh, hopefully when we close this course, that you will, you know, that will be the most thing, important thing. That is, how do I get myself ready uh, to be a pioneer, somebody who's going to start to work, and because that requires certain, uh, you know, certain preparation so that you can be ready to start the work. Right. So I'm going to uh, pause here for today, and uh, we will pick up next week and talk about the spiritual aspects of uh, pioneering of church planting. What this, how do you do that? What, what are the things we do in the spiritual side when we go into starting a work? All right. Um, so we're going to close in prayer. If there are no questions, no comments, um, we will close. Everybody okay? All right. Um, for those of you uh, who may be planning, you know, maybe your, your plan is that after you finish, you know, your time of study with uh, in this, this Bible college, uh, that your next step is to start over, maybe plant a church or maybe start some kind of ministry. I want you to look at this section that we've just gone through, you know, uh, from chapter one till this lesson number 14, the practical things, and then see how uh, you can work through it for the ministry or the work that the church that you want to pioneer. You start working on it, start thinking about it, uh, and say, like, you know, this is what I can do, and, and you know, start praying over it. And then when you get in the spiritual side, you start working on the spiritual side as well. Okay? May I request somebody to please pray, and then we will close in this. Somebody could pray for that as a class. Thank you. Anyone? Dear Heavenly Father, we praise you, we acknowledge you, for you thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. We are praying uh, at this moment. We are praying. Uh, thank you for leading us throughout this class. Thank you for teaching us all the wonderful insights, Father. Thank you for each and every moment of your divine knowledge and and, and leading, Father. Thank you. I I. I Pray for the life of Pastor Ashish. Uh, through him, we are being blessed, Father. Thank you so much. And thank you for every good things in our life. Uh, let this all teachings remain with us to the end so that we can serve you and you for the Father according to your holy will. Thank you so much for this, for everything. And I give all glory and honor unto your mm -hmm. holy name. Thank you so much. I ask this prayer in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, everyone. God bless you all. Thanks for being in the class today. Uh, see you again, sir. Sure. God bless. God bless you. God bless you, John. God bless you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. God bless. Thank you, Pastor.